identifying the right patient, i.e. those with high risk factors and a high LDL cholesterol, can give you really quite a big absolute benefit. And that's sort of really been borne out by the Fourier trial. So it's a landmark day in cardiovascular disease prevention because here you have a 27,000 person study we're on top of statin therapy. You see a reduction of 20% in CV death non-fatal MI and stroke with a monoclonal antibody that reduced LDL by over 50%. Now many people look at the data and they might say, well, we're a bit disappointed, we expected more. But remember, it's a relatively short duration. And what we know in the first year after a, a, a trial begins and people are exposed to a drug, for every one millimole reduction in LDL cholesterol, you're actually only seeing about a 12% benefit. In subsequent years, year two onwards, you see more like a 22% reduction for every one millimole lowering. So the average follow-up in Fourier was much, much shorter. It was about two years on average. And there were 7,000 patients who actually had less than one year of follow-up. So that would have impacted. So the benefit is really what you would expect to see with a trial design like that. Interestingly, looking at the study, there was uh, there were some specific groups that seemed to benefit maybe a little bit more. So, for example, people who could not tolerate high-intensity statin and they could only tolerate moderate-intensity statin, they seemed to get more than the average population average reduction. And so that would support, for example, people who are statin intolerant or cannot take high doses and don't get to goal and don't get to their target. So they may be people who actually um, get more benefit and that offsets some of the costs of these agents. So that's certainly of interest. We found that the events that were uh, reduced were mostly stroke and non-fatal MI. There wasn't really an impact on cardiovascular death. But that's hard to show with an average follow-up of about two years. So I don't think we should really be disheartened, but really imagine what would have happened if we'd followed these people up for about five years. We also saw the SPIRE 1 and SPIRE 2 trials. So SPIRE 1 used the agent Ocasuzumab, SPIRE 1 and 2 used the agent Ocasuzumab. SPIRE 1 had an LDL below 100, SPIRE 2 and a short follow-up. Average was about seven months because the, the trials were stopped by Pfizer because of neutralizing antibodies. SPIRE 2 had a baseline LDL of 133, and even though the, the size of the, uh, the population was, was smaller because they had a high risk because of the high baseline LDL and a slightly longer follow-up, more than 12 months, they actually saw a significant benefit of 21% on a composite endpoint. Now, it's really interesting because we know that the 50% reduction in LDL with bocuzumab at 14, 12 to 14 weeks was attenuated over time. So despite that, you still saw a benefit. So that's giving you another clue. One is we should be thinking about people not only with high risk, but also a high starting level of LDL. And the fact that the bocuzumab SPIRE2 trial is concordant with what you saw with Fourier, that bodes very well for Odyssey, Odyssey outcome. So we would expect Odyssey outcomes to be positive. And if you're doing that trial, the first thing you want to do is not be in a hurry to finish. You want patients to be followed up maybe for three, three and a half years, because then you're probably going to see this 25, 27, 28 percent reduction because the baseline LDL is very similar to Fourier and the only thing that will be different is these are post-ACS patients, there's a high event rate, but if you can follow these people up for longer, one would anticipate a much bigger benefit than we saw today with Fourier.